it's been a long struggle and we have been uh, you know i've been leading these matters for about 5 or 6 year and we've argued two rounds so every day is i feel just as tonight in both matters for the rith foundation um and the all india democratic women's association which has 10 million registered women um as members i was a leading as counsel i was not i was not filing but i think with a matter like this once personal feelings are largely irrelevant i'm not saying one doesn't have them but i'm saying that they're actually not relevant because women are being raped as we speak and the exception to section 375 says that married rapists have a conjugal right to essentially um that's the implication to be vaginal rape but also because section 375 has been amended over the years and now gives uh women protection from anal rape uh participation is somebody participating in gang rape gang rape itself but if it's not rape which is what the exception number 2 says then a man a husband rather who has committed such things and there are there are some cases where this happens uh cannot be prosecuted for penal vaginal rape anal rape gang rape or anything that is rape so this i think is um this i think is a burning problem and i think this is a problem not my not i mean not for me personally how i feel when lose not relevant it's a problem it's a blot on this nation and i think that it in my personal opinion it is a blot on the constitution of india i am no sudseer but i will say that i think that justice shankar's judgment is very robust as per the current constitutional scheme the five judge benches in um joseph shine the the nine judge bench in puttaswami the uh, you know and there's so many judgments nafte johar that are very very clear on women's sexual autonomy sexual autonomy bodily integrity and intimate decision making um nalsa is very clear on the fundamental right to sexual expression i think it is in consonance of the of these judgments in the constitutional scheme of things so so yes that does provide hope and i think that the various issues that might come up in uh in one's mind while thinking about such an issue such as the uh, can a new offense be created now we approach that in multiple ways because uh, uh because uh, one of the honorable judges wasn't very convinced and i think that actually ended up strengthening our arguments and also possibly justice shankar's decision so so we hope that that will serve the uh, the uh the uh, you know the cause that we represent when we approach the uh, the supreme court all of this is really to be fleshed out before the uh, courts at the next level before the supreme court but very briefly um justice shankar has i mean i beg your pardon justice hari shankar has cited my written submissions explicitly um in uh, paragraph 105 and said that i have uh, conceded fairly that there is an intelligible differentia between married women and unmarried women however the rest of my written submissions the next paragraph i think says that 
where there is an intelligible differential, there must also be a rational nexus to a compelling state interest. And the latter two essential and necessary tests to meet the Article 14 threshold are missing. But we will elaborate all of this before the next hour. The government of India are not taking, you know, in the end, saying that we're not going to take a stand against you is something that indicates that perhaps they are considering the issue. Obviously, this doesn't take the need for speed um, off. However, I think the Supreme Court has sort of taken very um, good steps in the sedition case and said that, look, we're essentially going to stay one aspect of this, no new cases, and uh, please more or less ensure that no coercive steps happen in the pending cases, and then you get back to us. Um, and so I think that's a, that's a very positive way to go about an unjust law and give a short deadline. And given that the government hasn't opposed us, I think it behooves the government to file an appeal themselves, and it behooves the government even more to pass a legislation, given that they do have a very strong majority. Um, and this could quite easily be removed. Um, so let's see, let's see what happens. Possibly, I think that since 2013, it's now been what, uh, practically a decade. And, mm -hmm. and I think thinking around equality has moved on. Um, I also think that this government taking a similar, uh, taking the non-stand that they did would have been unlikely before, you know? And, um, but also I do think that, you know, if the, if the government wanted to, wants to pass any legislation, they can and uh, they should, this one, they should. <laughs>